Hey everyone, um, this is not going to be a video about my opinions on Card Car D. I'll be making that video a little bit later. Um, this is going to be a video about cards like Card Car D. And when I say that, I mean cards that come out in the meta and everybody just, you know, goes crazy over them. They have a nerdgasm over the card. Um, the last time this happened was Pod Duality. When Pod Duality came out, everybody was freaking. They were just like, this card is too broken, this card is too broken, it's too busted, oh my god, it's it's amazing, it's it's just, it, it needs to be banned, blah, 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 you know. And, you know, people were like, oh, we can be throwing every deck, it makes every deck better, it's amazing, blah, 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 and they just kept going on and on and on. And when it got released, it was a secret, but that didn't stop people. People still bought three of it, oh, place it, I'll buy it, place it, I'll buy it, $600, oh, whatever, I don't care, I'll buy it. Um, maybe that was a little bit of exaggeration, usually they were like 450 I believe in the beginning they were 450 to 600 depending on like where you were and who you were buying it from. But I do know some people paid 200 per pot of duality, so some people did pay 600 for the playset. Um, but anyway, so when it first came out, everybody bought three of it and they just threw it in their deck. It didn't matter what deck they ran, they bought three, threw it in their deck. Bam, done. It was considered the best card in the meta, amazing, makes any deck better, blah, blah, blah. A lot of people soon realized that's not the case. Pot of Duality is a good card. I'm not saying it's bad. It's a good card. But it had a really big downside. The not special summoning. Now, and also not being able to play more than one per turn. That means if you draw two, you're kind of slowing yourself down. But it, it usually balanced out because you got to get cards off the top of your deck. But then again, it prevented you from special summoning. So back then, for decks that had to special summon, like plants, they used one, maybe. It was okay once in a while, but... They didn't really use it that much because they needed to special summon every turn. Summon synchro, 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 synchro every turn. That's how plants won the game. Um, and a lot of people didn't realize that until they were like, oh, actually, you know, now that I think about it, maybe Pod Duality isn't the greatest in my deck, or maybe I shouldn't be running at three. I honestly think Card Card D is going to be the same exact setup. Yes, it's a plus one. I give you that. But it has so many restrictions. You cannot special summon it. You cannot special summon the turn you summon it. You must use its effect during your main phase one. So even if you could normal summon two monsters by some um, some feat, you cannot attack and then use its effect in the same turn. When you use him, it automatically ends your turn. Um, I mean, there's there's a lot of ramifications of using him now. Like I said, not saying it's a bad card. He has a very good effect, but it's very limited. Using his effect removes him from play, or technically sends him to the graveyard, but gets him off your field, and then you're open to a direct attack. Now, that's bad versus some decks right now. Hopeless Dragons to be named one of them. If you leave yourself with an open field versus Hopeless Dragons, you are in for a world of hurt. Also, a lot of people run the argument of, well, I'll just set three back rows and I'll be fine. Then, you're opening yourself up to a very, very, very strong turn one heavy storm play. You don't want to be giving them that much advantage. The card card D will get you a plus one. I grant you that. But if they heavy storm you, that's a plus two for them. You just minus yourself by doing that. So, you really got to gauge, you know, whether... Can I use this effectively and can I use it a lot? Because a lot of times when you draw him and you're playing, let's say, Insectors. Every turn you want to summon an Insector monster, equip the Hornet, blow up, do, 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 do your loop. If you draw him and you have him in an Insector, you're always going to go with the Insector. So until you're out of Insectors, the whole, the, he's just there and he's just not useful. Now, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I'm just saying that you you always want cards that you can use. That's that's how the that's the rule of thumb in this game. If you have a card in your hand, you want to be able to use it. Because if you can't use it and your opponent can use all the cards in their hand, they have a better chance of winning than you do. That's just how it works. They have more stuff to play with. They have more options. Um, and I think card card D is going to be that way. Now, I could see a lot of people running one, two of them. Two of them would be actually pretty good, I think. Um, first turn, it's a very nice thing. Just summon him, pop him off, draw a card, you know, get that done. Um, you know, maybe set two backers like a bottomless and a warning or warning and book or something like that. You know, I could see that. Um, but, like, again, I don't think windups will use him. You know, people are saying he'll be in every deck, he's amazing, blah, blah, blah. I've, that's all I've been hearing on period for the last two weeks is oh we can't wait till card card d comes out well he's good but he's not that good he's overhyped in my opinion pa duality was the same way and if card card d goes up to 200 dollars per 
we're going to have a problem. Last I checked, he was about 50, but we'll have to see what the demand and price goes up for him. Um, actually, you know, not true. Um, I know people were charging 100 today at the sneak peek for him, so he's going up in price severely. So, went from 50 on Saturday to 100 on Sunday. That's pretty nasty. But anyways, um, so, like I said, I think... <clears throat> cards like this are really overhyped. They're good cards, but they're too overhyped, and that causes people to think that they're good in every single deck when they're really not. I mean, in my opinion, windups just don't plus from it. Windups have their own loop. They go for that, and then that's it. That's the game. Um, can they do it to try and set up? Yeah, but then they're giving their opponent another turn to go and set more back rows to stop them. And with priority gone, that's going to make a really big difference. That too. A lot of people don't understand that. People keep going, oh, I can priority him. No, you can't. Priority is gone. He can get veilered. He can get booked. He can get all of that. Priority is gone. So if you summon him, he's just there. That's just how it is. Um, so that's my two cents. Let me know what you guys think. Go ahead and reply in the comments, and I'll catch you all later.